Proverbs with Carol Kane. We're happy to welcome Clark Durant, businessman who started Cornerstone Schools in Detroit some years ago. It's great to see you it's again. Nice to be here, Carol. We had Ernestine Sanders, who you worked with in Cornerstone on a few weeks ago, talking about all the things there. I know you had to take a leave of absence there to run. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that. You uh, ran for Senate once before, 1990. You're running again now. Why? I think because I found that our country is deeply at risk. Uh, both Republicans and Democrats have been acting irresponsibly, not just these last four years, but the last 20 years, frankly, with all this debt and spending. And you have these people who are destroying our country and not creating the jobs and the opportunities aren't there for our cornerstone kids, but for all kids. And that has to change. So I've decided to run. If you are successful, ultimately, and prevail, what's the first thing you would do in Senate? Well, I think there are three things. The first is the obvious things about repealing Obamacare, repealing Dodd-Frank so there's more access to capital. But let me tell you the very first thing that I want to do. There is a deep longing for a unity in our country. And I think Martin Luther King and Abraham Lincoln were right to focus on our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. We need to reinvigorate an appreciation of our Constitution and the responsibilities we, the people, have for this experiment in self-government. What's the number one thing that separates you from Pete Hoekstra and Randy Hackman, who you're running against in uh, the upcoming primary? Well, let me talk about Pete Hoekstra, because he's my main opponent. Uh, Pete's a career politician. He spent 18 years in Washington. He, like Debbie Stabenow, has voted time and time and time and time again to increase debt, increase spending. Uh, he's voted for these bailouts. He's done the earmarks. He uh, made a deal, frankly, with Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters to limit or shut down or slow down the opening of markets for Michi Michigan goods, but goods from all across America. And I think people are tired of these career politicians. They want to change. I am the outsider. So what do you bring to the dance, if you will, that they don't have? For 40 years, I have fixed broken things and created opportunities for people uh, in the in the marketplace, uh, whether it's a, as a 23-year-old vice president at Hillsdale College, uh, whether it's starting the Cornerstone Schools, or whether it's saving the Ann Arbor Railroad that was going to be liquidated, and we put a team together, saved it, created jobs, and today that's a working business instead of being a liquidated business. Let's talk about something that's been in the headlines this past week, that being your pay at Cornerstone. You're making over 600000 There's some talk <laughs> with the Democrats and Mark Brewer talking about the foundation. When you look at that money and you consider how much money the governor is making 200 some and the mayor and well, the head get, of DPS. Let's, let's get the what do you say right. to critics well, about that? Let's get the facts right. First, let's get the facts right. Uh, for 14 years, I served as chairman of Cornerstone. I received no pay from Cornerstone. For six years, when Tony Early and Walt Zarnicki asked me to become the CEO of Cornerstone, I received $200,000 as the CEO of Cornerstone. No benefits, no raises, no nothing. Uh, I was at the time heading up a separate foundation chaired by Robert Lutz uh, that I was being paid $250,000 to do a lot of work to create a new common school that would help more children. I haven't been paid $600,000. I haven't been even paid, uh, uh, my, my salary's never been $500,000. So you're so there were some media reports of how much you're being paid are not accurate then? They're not accurate, but here's the thing that's really very interesting, and this is the thing that has to change in politics. What, and I'm, frankly, it's a sign that I am closing the gap, according to Rasmussen, I'm only nine points behind Stabenow now. The Democrats are trying to, to get rid of me quickly before the primary. They'd rather go against Pete Hoekstra. They don't want to go against an outsider and an outsider who will take it to them on jobs, the economy, and all these regulations that are killing our country, our state, and our businesses. There are polls that out that show that Hoekstra is up substantially over you. He ran for governor, has some name recognition. Mm -hmm. This is going to be also about money. Do you have the ability to raise the money to go up against Stabenow, who has a huge war chest and been at it for years? Here's the interesting thing. First of all, we've raised more than $2 million. The polls, frankly, even as recently as today, are a good thing. I started at two points. I'm now at 17 points uh, up, and we just started another half million dollars worth of TV buys because this is when people are paying attention. This is a marathon. It is not a sprint, and we'll have plenty of money. In fact... Uh, Michigan is not in play when people have thought that Pete Hoekstra is the front runner. When, and he is right now. But when Clark Durant is the insurgent challenger, comes along, there will be plenty of money to take on Debbie Stabenow. Real quickly, because the globalization marketplace and everything going on in Michigan, the uh, approach to China real quickly. What would be your approach to China? Well, I think, first of all, uh, China steals our secrets. We have to protect against that. We have to be aggressive about that. When China violates trade laws, we have to be aggressive about that. 
but we also un have to understand that we need to open markets. Michigan products, whether they, we make things and we grow things, and whether it's agriculture, it's manufacturing, we should open our markets, and China would be, is, and should be a great market for Michigan products. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Look in the camera. Tell someone why they should vote for you. 10 seconds. I want them to vote for Clark Durant because I will challenge the status quo in Washington. I will be a rebel for a cause for every citizen in Michigan. I'm the only Republican that has Democrats, Independents, Tea Partiers, and Republicans who will change the way Washington is done. It's broken. It's not accountable. Vote for Clark Durant. So do you own that motorcycle in the commercial? I love, I'm buying that motorcycle, <laughs> baby. I'm going to buy it and I'm learning to ride it. Right, It'll, be It'll be fun. Great to have you inside the studio here. Appreciate that. Good luck in the campaign trail. We will be watching, and we're going to have more campaign candidates right after this.